It was the year 1909 in Molsheim, France, when Italian Ettore Bugatti created this remarkable company. For more than a hundred years, Bugatti has represented the pinnacle of speed in racing and the ultimate luxury car for the world's richest. Everything from the Type 57 Bugatti to the new Chiron has been an absolutely legendary car. And this, the Veyron, is no exception. In fact, the Bugatti Veyron is one of the most powerful names in the automotive industry and mainstream media, thanks to rap songs and its world record attempt. And today, thanks to Royalty Exotic Cars, I'm about to review it. Fast forward to the year 2000 when Bugatti created the Veyron 16.4 concept for the Geneva Motor Show. That had 16 cylinders and made 630 horsepower. But then move again forward to 2005 when the actual production Veyron hit the streets with a heck of a lot more firepower. 8 liter W16, 4 turbos, and 1,001 horsepower. Every element of the Veyron is absurd and more ostentatious than any car before it. The highest top speed, the most power, and of course, the highest price. With a base price of north of a million dollars, this was the most expensive new car ever created. Stock the 16.4 was able to do 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds. Unheard of for its time. Sure, fast forward to modern day and the Chiron will do 0 to 60 in 2.4. Even the Supersport was able to do it in 2.5. But a Chiron will cost you two to four times as much as this Veyron. And with a top speed of 253 miles an hour, I'd say that's good enough. Absolutely destroying the previous record of the world's fastest car, the McLaren F1, at a lowly 241 miles an hour. The Veyron uses a seven-speed double-clutch transmission that's exceptionally smooth, especially for how brutal this car truly is. And this thing actually is anything but stock. The already $1.5 million Bugatti Veyron was taken to Design House Mansory for a complete overhaul. What do you get with that? Well, full carbon fiber body panels, new front fenders, a new hood, front fascia, OEM LED headlights, a complete new interior, a beautifully sounding exhaust, and uh, this thing makes 1,100 horsepower now. I think it's time to take it for a spin. knows the Veyron is quick, but what does this level of acceleration actually feel like? 1,100 horsepower, and yes, it weighs over 4,000 pounds, but still, that is a lot of power. Well, we're about to find out. All right, feed onto the gas. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that is ridiculous. And the coolest part about this Veyron is that Houston decided, for whatever reason, nothing but just being an utter savage to make this rear wheel drive. How crazy is that? Not only is it a Veyron with one of the best sounding exhaust setups I've ever seen, a beautiful body kit, a cool wrap, but now it is rear wheel drive and that is freaking awesome. Am I gonna be doing some drifting in the Veyron? No, I think I'll let Houston do that, but oh man, would this thing be nuts if you really floored it at low speeds with traction control off. Now, Houston has also come up with a fantastic opportunity for you guys. Listen to this, he is willing to fly out five people from anywhere in the United States to hang out with me and Royalty Exotic Cars for the day and drive around in a straight piped Lamborghini Aventador. Yes, five people who are, these are the only requirements, subscribed to Vehicle Virgins and subscribed to Royalty Exotic Cars. I've got a link in the description below for that. And you'll get flown out to Las Vegas to have a once in a lifetime opportunity to experience an Aventador and maybe if we can convince him some rides in this thing. 
Now the Veyron gets criticized a lot for its sound, and in general that's talking about stock ones. When you hear this thing start up in person, it's absolutely monstrous, the sound this makes. But what you don't get to experience, unless you're riding in the car and you win that giveaway, is the turbo noise and the noises it makes inside the cabin. With four turbos, it actually seems like, at full speed, that you're in a $2 million Dyson vacuum that's also inside of a tornado all at the same time. Both the acceleration and then when you let off the gas and all four turbos expand and air goes out the waste gates, oh, it sounds so ridiculous. The other thing that's epic with this car is the fact that the Mansory kit has converted a first generation Veyron into something that actually looks beautiful. Now I agree with people, a 2006 Veyron, it's not very attractive. It looks like a giant Volkswagen Beetle that squashed a bit with a ton of horsepower. But that front bumper upgrade that they did on the Vitesse and the Super Sport, which they have here, as well as those LED headlights, make all the difference in the world. And now it actually looks like as desirable of a car as it costs and the performance suggests. Having never driven a Veyron, I didn't know what to expect in terms of steering feel and the dynamics of its handling. Obviously, it's received criticism for not being able to go around a racetrack very fast, although even in Top Gear, it did actually do pretty well. But the steering feels nice. It's actually tighter than I was expecting. It doesn't feel loose and sloppy. And yeah, on this twisty road, it's a little tight for a Veyron. It'd probably be better in something like a Lotus Elise but I love it and commuting around all day and going to lunch, if you haven't seen the previous video where I took this to McDonald's, it's actually a very comfortable car. It kind of reminds me uh, of a Bentley GT3R, which is the more race car version of the Continental GT with much more power, a higher price tag, a nicer interior, cooler exterior, and straight line speed like no other car. I can't even imagine what a Chiron feels like. Oh my God, and that seven speed gearbox shifts so quick, you actually don't feel the shifts. You don't feel them whatsoever. Uh, you do a tiny bit in the Huracan or a Porsche GT3 RS, but in this, it's just as smooth as it gets. Oh my God, that sound too. To me, the most important part of this review was figuring out how the Veyron actually drove. Everyone knows it's fast. Everyone knows it's expensive. The looks are controversial to some, although in this format, and the Vitesse and the Super Sport, I actually quite like the way it looks, but actually knowing how it drives takes being behind uh, the driver's seat and the steering wheel, and I am utterly impressed with the way this thing drives. It's, a it's actually awesome. Now, some cool little tidbits for you on the Veyron. Uh, when I did the Koenigsegg ride, I went over certain things such as each tire is $10,000. Now, why does it cost $10,000 a tire when they're still made by Michelin? Well, they were made bespoke for this car so that they could handle the downforce and the speeds uh, of doing a top speed run. Now, they're still working on the tire that's capable of withstanding the speeds that the Chiron is able to reach. And that's an incredible research and development project and a partnership for Michelin and Bugatti together, but they cost $40,000 to replace. Now the owner of this car has done something awesome, built custom wheels for the car that actually fit and are the perfect rolling diameter. And you're able to put things like Lamborghini Aventador spec tires that, yeah, they're 355s in the back instead of 365s, but as long as the ratios are good, it's the same tire and you're spending a heck of a lot less money. One thing on the Veyron wheels is because they're actually glued to the tires themselves, that's something that they had to do on the Veyron. They've fix that for the Chiron for top speed runs, every third tire change, you actually have to replace the wheels as well. So it's 40K for a set of four tires and 40K for a set of new rims. You're spending $80,000 before install. And trust me, install is expensive on this thing. The machine's required to actually unglue the tires from the wheels. That's a hefty maintenance cost. And certain things like if you get a nail in one of the tires, Bugatti forces you to buy two tires at once, not just one. So then you're spending 20 grand for a flat or somebody like T-Pain who a bird hit one of his radiators and they made him replace all 10 radiators instead of just one. He ended up selling the car. The good news is with the Chiron, they've taken a lot of that into consideration, knowing that just because you are wealthy enough to afford one of these cars, which basically means you can buy anything you want in the world, does not mean that these types of people who are keen businessmen enjoy spending exorbitant amounts of money on normal things like tires. So now you've got this crazy four year unlimited mile warranty on the Chiron that's extendable for 50K a year. And that is a pretty cool thing. I hope that the sound is adequately portrayed from this video. I know it's not, but oh my gosh, the sound of those turbos is just ridiculous.
<laughs> and the fact that it handles well too, I'm just, I'm in love with this thing to be honest. And even more crazy than that, the owner of this car, Houston, hasn't had really any major issues with it. So to own this car for a year, not have to spend too much in maintenance, that is wicked. And these things have come down a lot in value. Now I'm not saying I'm about to go out and buy one and I have to have a couple more dollars in my bank account than that, but oh man, is this sick. Well, we'll do one final sprint up the hill. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Smash the thumbs up button for the first rear wheel drive Veyron review of all time. And make sure to subscribe to my channel as well as Royalty Exotic Cars, link in description below to win a once in a lifetime opportunity to be flown out to Vegas, have a day with me, have a day with the Royalty Exotic Cars crew and drive around in a freaking straight piped Lamborghini Aventador.